Okay, so I'm going to try and do a race run and explain what buckyball racing is while I do that. So it's an old racing club in Elite Dangerous, and the thing you need to know about Elite Dangerous is that there are three different types of flying. There's normal space, which is just flying around in a ship. There is super cruise, which is faster than light travel between planets within a star system. And there's hyper jumping, which is jumping from one star system to another star system. Um, and buckyballing, unlike many other types of racing, involves all of these. So I'm going to start and I'll try and explain what I'm doing as it's going on. Okay, we have... So this is the galaxy map. This is where I can see other star systems. And it does, in fact, model the entire Milky Way galaxy, which is kind of cool. But that takes hours to get across. So we're just racing in our local bubble. Now, I tend to start... And we'll do this without music, because I'm recording voice. Um... I'm gonna make sure the volume's good. Okay, and I tend to start on even stuff, and I'm gonna undock from this station and boost out. So I'm doing the regulation race. So this is like stock car racing, as opposed to Formula One or something. So this is gonna be a bit slower than regular racing. Unlimited racing goes faster. So I'm gonna launch at the bottom of the minute. Four, three two, one, and go. Okay, I'm going to retract my landing gear, and I'm immediately going to boost out of the slot of the station, because I want to get out of mass lock as soon as possible. When you're near a station, you can't hyper jump to another system, so I'm attempting to get away from the station until my mass lock goes away, and I can start charging my frame shift drive to jump to the next system. Um, so hyperspace jumps are important. They each a full cycle hyperspace jump takes 45 seconds. So my goal is to minimize as much of those as possible. So right now I'm jumping 16 light years to the next system. And that's where I'm going to, for this race, I'm going to buy some consumer technology. Now I could buy that from any system. Part of the race is finding your own route. So I've analyzed a bunch of the other systems and I think this is one of the fastest ones. So I arrive in this system, now I'm in super cruise. So you can see I'm traveling at appreciable fractions of the speed of light. And I'm going to head to Ahern Enterprise, which is 200 light seconds away. And so I'm gonna be cruising out here. And one of the interesting things, um, a lot of buckyball racing is about super cruise, which seems interesting because a lot of people that play Elite Dangerous don't quite know the tricks of it. So I'm gonna to need to select Ahern Enterprise to do a little trick I know. And when my time to arrival gets down to four seconds, I'm going to cut my FTL drive. And then I'm going to get ready. And when it gets down to five, I'm going to deselect. And I'm going to tap to get just a little bit closer. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to drop into normal space at Ahern Enterprise. So that was a pretty advanced trick, which um, I'll explain later if I have time. But for now, I'm going to drop into normal space. And I'm going to use my afterburners, which are also called boosters, to go towards Ahern Enterprise. And I'm going to request docking while I continue boosting. And I'm going to request new pads, because there are certain landing pads that are better. Um, just because they line up. Oh, come on, give me something good here. Yes, 36 is perfect. I love pad 36. Um, I'm going to put down my landing gear. And I'm going to... Try and tap down a little hard on pad 36, because this race has a bonus if you end at 1%. Shoot. And the station's bouncing me around. So I'm going to try and land, go into the station, go to Starport Services. I need to very quickly go to the commodities market and buy eight consumer technology, and then tap back and relaunch before it takes me into the hangar, because if it goes into the hangar, I'll lose like 10 seconds of time there. So now I'm gonna jump to the next stage in the system. So I'm coming out of this station, and it's gonna release my docking clamps and see why pad 36 is perfect. It's because as soon as I get off, I can boost straight out of the slot. I'm gonna turn off my flight assist so that I can coast a bit faster, 
and I'm going to be trying to get out of mass lock to get to the next system as fast as possible. Now unfortunately, since this is a regulation ship or a stock ship, it doesn't have enough range to jump to the next system in just one jump. So I'm going to have to do it in two jumps. So first I'm going to jump to this next star system, and that's going to take 45 seconds for a cycle. And then another jump to the next system, which is going to take 45 more seconds. And so this is part of where you get the root optimization, because you want to find star systems to buy this consumer technology that are in between the two points, and not every system sells them. Um, and then you might try and find a station that's closer to a star, so you don't have to travel as far away. And so my next jumping point is Saholia. So I'm going to want to get away from this star so that I can jump towards it and so that it's not obscured. Because if that was on the other side of the star, I can't jump through the star. Um, so I just need to go away from that. In some races, you would have to do refueling. So you get in near the star and you scoop fuel like hydrogen straight out of the star, um, which is dangerous because you can overheat. Uh, and it does tend to cook you, especially if you're charging your frame shift drive at the same time. So it becomes a risk reward thing. But in this race, refueling has been outlawed. Uh, just this one, not in general. Um, and so now we're going to head towards Julian Terminal. So again, this is a super cruise approach. And this is a more typical one, not using the trick that I mentioned earlier. So I have to head away from the star as soon as possible because the star is a giant gravity well and gravity wells slow down your super cruise max speed and your braking ability. So I'm heading straight away from the primary star and then I am heading towards Julian Terminal, but um, I kind of need to spiral in. We've maximized this approach and there are two schools of thought. You can either spiral in like a helix. So that's showing my time to arrival two or three seconds. And if I went straight towards it, I would overshoot. So instead what I want to do is I want to kind of go by and I'm going to add a little bit more gas because I'm not going quite fast enough. Yeah, okay, this should be good. We'll see. And I want to swing by this planet because that will slow me down just enough that I'm not going to overshoot it. And that should be a pretty good approach. Um, and so it's kind of like racing curves where you're trying to hit the apex and stuff like that. Um, and that's one of those fun things where it's really down to feel and experience. Okay, and there I can see my landing pad, so I'm going to be trying to go towards it and putting out my landing gear in time that my landing gear can go down, but not too fast because my landing gear does slow me down. And then I also want to take some damage here because remember I want to end the race with 1%. Oh, that's going to be too much, too much. Oof. Oh, dang, that was sweet. Okay, that actually turned out right. Okay, now this is going to be really fast because I need to go down and I need to hit the commodities market, sell, sell consumer technology, and then buy, bio waste, eight bio waste, buy, and then hit launch before I go in. Yes, I should have gotten it there. And then it's going to be two jumps back to Dublin Citadel. Now this is an outpost and I specifically selected an outpost because then I don't have to go through the slot and into the bigger station. And so I think it's actually faster to get out of. I need to measure it, um, but I'm pretty sure that's the way it works. Okay, and so we're out of mass lock. Yeah, that's definitely faster because you get out of mass lock from an outpost at four kilometers. And for a bigger station, an Orbis or a Coriolis station, you have to get to 7.5 kilometers to get out of mass lock. And this ship travels about 400 meters a second at max boost. Um, so three kilometers, 3.5, that's something like nine seconds. So if you're saving nine seconds, that can sometimes be the difference between a race or not. Plus you don't have to like go through the slot. So I would argue that actually saves you a little bit more. So we're on our way back to Gateway. Um, and so as I was saying about the super cruise, it's all about knowing how those gravitational wells work. So the suns, the, the stars have giant gravitational wells. So you just want to point straight away from them as soon as possible if you're going off even at an angle, you're not picking up speed as fast as you need to be able to. Um, and then this approach to Gateway is an interesting one because the station around Gateway, and these are the nuances you pick up, is in really high orbit. So that means that doing the helix of death in to kind of try and bleed off speed works a bit differently. And I don't even know that I can exactly explain 
how, because um, there are millions and billions of star systems in the game, and there are at least tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of stations. And so, like, you can't optimize the approach to all of them. But as you do a race more and more over the week, um, you tend to get more experienced at what sort of approaches work for the different planetary systems. And it's kind of the beauty of procedural generation is every race that we do, it's sort of the same and involves the same skill set, but it's done in a different way. So I'm going to try still the helix in here, and I'm down to three seconds, and three seconds is usually a good spot to hold a helix. Um, and I'm going to try peeling in here, because I'm going up to four, and I think, we'll see, I think I can bleed off maybe enough speed, because this planet doesn't have an atmosphere, so I can get closer to it. Yeah, that was enough. In fact, that was maybe a little bit too much speed that I let off because I don't want it to get above five seconds. Um, but that'll be okay. It's it's not a terrible approach. It's not the best, but there's a huge risk-reward calculation going on because if you overshoot, you have to turn all the way around. And so I've got my flight assist off so I can coast better. I'm requesting docking pad 14 as a solid pad. It's not the best because it's a little near the back of the station, and this is not the fastest of ships. Um, but we're gonna call it good enough. It's gonna be on the red side. I'm gonna pop my landing gear out. I'm at 48%, so I don't particularly have to worry about bleeding off more hull here. Uh, I put out my landing gear a bit too soon, so I tapped it back out so I could get a little bit more speed. Okay, that's not bad. Oh, geez. This is rough. They've had some stuff with the station spin recently. I'm not quite sure if it's a bug, but like the rotation of the station will sometimes bounce your ship sideways and it's not super consistent. We're going to sell our bio waste. Sell button, thank you. We're going to launch. I'm going to plot to the next system, which I'm doing Archer Settlement. Yeah, that's it. But I also need to stop, and here's the fun trick of this race. We're gonna go to Gateway Interchange Hub and do a fly through of the tunnels. So this is kind of the gimmick of this race, which is quite fun. And you have to be going fast enough through the tunnel or you get a time penalty. And I'm also gonna turn on my ship's night vision. Um, and I wanna be steering away from the planet just to get the maximum amount of speed. And so here, instead of hyper jumping to the next system, I'm gonna be super cruising to the Gateway Interchange Hub. Um, and so now instead of doing a hyper jump, I've done a super cruise jump and you can see it's 0.25 light seconds away and I'm going to be watching my time to approach it's down to 13 seconds, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and I'm going to start cutting the engines and start steering towards it because again, I don't want to overshoot. Okay. And we should be good because this has a little bit of a different gravitational profile than a station does. Okay, and we're good to drop in, and we hope we get a lucky drop. It's, a, it's not great. Um, our thing is on the very far side, so I'm going to take this chance to go back and to replot this to make sure I'm going the right way. And it's right on the tunnel, is on that far piece of structure. So it takes the ship a little longer, and we need to be going through it at least 200 meters a second. And because of the size of the ship, we're gonna have to do some rolls here. But it feels so fucking sick when you get it right. <laughs> okay, and now we're gonna jump to the next system. And there we're gonna buy a domestic appliance. Okay, so we got out of mass lock and we're cruising towards Indale. And I hope I've done my fuel management just right. So this is where I mean, we haven't even gotten into how the, how the loadouts of the ship changes stuff. But for fuel management here, I've cut my fuel loadout. I started the race with 62% instead of 100% so that my ship will be light enough that I can just make that final jump. And I haven't actually done it yet, but if I do it then, I save an extra hyper jump, which is an extra 45 seconds, which is huge. Okay, so I'm gonna super cruise immediately away from the star. I wanna get up to one C. Once I get up to 1C, I'm going to start turning towards Archer Settlement. 
and this one is around a planet. So I'm going to start start my loop. I'm at four seconds. I'd rather be at three, so I'm going to give it a little bit more throttle. And I'm going to be peeling in, peeling in. Uh, I need to bleed off some more speed. I, this is a tiny planet, so it's not going to give me as much gravitational breaking, which is why you're seeing me do like these weird shenanigans. Okay, that got me enough. That got me a bit too much. This is weird. I'm going to have to fine tune my approach to this later. But this is going to be good enough. I'm going to. Three. Okay, yeah, we're fine. Um, and one. And drop on it. And boom. Okay, cool. So we need one thing of domestic appliances here. Pad 29 is not great. Pad 29 is not great. Pad 4 is terrible. Pad 12 is perfect. Okay. So we're now going to come in, get our landing gear out, head straight towards pad 12. Oh, I don't really mind losing a bit more pad integrity. I have to be really careful not to ding it. I lost my last race, or the last run I did, I blew up on the final pad. It really sucked. Okay, so for here we're going commodities, domestic appliances, we're just buying one ton and we're hoping we can make that final jump. I have not done this before. And so we need to go to the Celia of Vision, and then I'm gonna directly select it, because I essentially have to trick my flight computer, because it wants to make it in two jumps, but I, I can do it in one, I'm pretty sure. We'll see. We're gonna pop on out, blast through the slot, flight assist off. See, it's gonna take up almost all of my fuel, if you look at that bar in the lower right. So, here's, here's to hoping. Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh, that planning is sweet. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, and we're gonna... That's like our max range. We're gonna use up our last drop of fuel jumping here. One. Engage. So all I gotta do now is land and also pull off that inner space trick. So the trick is weird. If there's a space station that's not orbiting a planet or that's far enough out, um, essentially the game gets confused and it treats it as a gravitational well if you have the station selected. But if you don't have the station selected, the game doesn't treat it as a gravitational well. So I'm going to go to Vasilia Vision, and I've got it there. I've got macros for this so that it goes better. I'm going to wait till it's four seconds out. Ten, six, five, four. I'm going to cut my engines. I'm coasting into it. I'm going to wait till that gets down to five. And tap it. And then I just need to get a little closer. And which one of those is Vasilia? Oh my gosh, I can't find it. So I'm going to have to select it again. That sucks. There it is. Okay, and I'm just going to go in from now. It's not the best approach, but I've had a really good rest of my run so that I'll be okay. Okay. Yeah, so that was 18 seconds worse than my last approach, which kind of sucks. But saving that jump saved me 45. Let's see if we can get a better pad. This last pad doesn't matter so much. Oh, 36 is fine. Okay, now comes the most stressful part. Because what I need to shoot, oh, coming in too fast. Let's get our landing gear out. Okay. the pad and we can start tapping and tapping and tapping and tapping and tapping we're down to eight percent six three two no and that's how it goes 
you win some, you lose some. <sighs> Brutal. So if I can get that right, and get the landing right, it should improve my time by like three minutes overall or something. And that's buckyball racing. And that's a very appropriate end to it. <laughs>